So, I had a chance to rewatch Full Metal Alchemist, The Sacred Star of Milos last night. I was rewatching it because I didn't really remember why I disliked the movie because I saw it in like 2011 or something. I think I saw it with like Japanese subtitles. The movie wasn't even dubbed when I saw it. But when I saw it last night, the fucking memories instantly came back to my brain about why I disliked this fucking movie. You know, first off, it's one of these anime movies that fits absolutely nowhere in the main timeline, in the main canon timeline. I mean, Dragon Ball Z used to pull that shit all the fucking time. Like, the third movie, Tree of Might, fits nowhere into the timeline. Absolutely nowhere in the timeline can that movie fucking fit. There's other movies with various inconsistencies, and I know it sounds like nitpicking, but really, when I, when I watch a fucking movie, and I can't place it into the timeline, I, I can't say, okay, this happened here, and then the rest of the events in the canon timeline are unaffected, that pisses me off so much. Bleach does that shit too, where movies just, movies make no sense. Like the last Bleach movie, uh, Hellverse, that movie makes absolutely no sense in the timeline. Does it, does it happen after Aizen is defeated? Does it happen after Okiora dies? Who fucking knows? Nobody knows. Even the fucking author didn't know. Kubo didn't know shit. But I digress. We're talking about Fulminar. Let, let's get past this. The art is not what Bones produced for Brotherhood or even for the original Fullmetal Alchemist anime in 2003. It's some sketchy new art, which, you know, I, I didn't have a problem with. I mean, it wasn't too unbearable because everyone still looks the same. They're just not as greatly detailed as they are in, you know, Brotherhood or in the manga. But once you get past the timeline, once you get past the art, you gotta get past the fact that in this movie, Basically, no one you like shows up. I mean, of course, you got Edward, you got Alphonse, you got Mustang, you got Riza, you got Winry. Armstrong is in this movie for a total of 15 seconds. Um, Fear Bradley is nowhere in this movie. None of the homunculi are in this movie. Father is not in this movie. Scar is not in this movie. Ling is not in this movie. Kimberly's not in this movie. Uh, Marco is not in this movie. Basically, I mean... None of the supporting cast from later on in the anime appears in this movie, which is another problem I had because if you're going to make a movie out of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood or, you know, just Full Metal Alchemist the manga, it should be after Father, but I understand kind of why they didn't go that route because, you know, Edward can't transmute shit. Uh, spoiler, sorry. But he can't transmute at, at the end of the Full Metal Alchemist manga. Okay, now once you get past all that shit, you gotta fucking take into account that the girl they introduce into this movie, the main, like, lead heroine, is a fucking Mary Sue. She is a Mary Sue to the goddamn core. If that didn't piss you off enough, we have... I mean, this is a full movie. To be honest, to be fair, this is a full movie. It's not like, you know, the fucking Dragon Ball Z movies or the... Or, you know, the Inuyasha movies or any other typical anime movie that lasts, like, maybe an hour and ten minutes, because this movie is almost two hours, you gotta give them credit for making a full-length feature film, at least. But they introduce, after that, I mean, summarizing this movie, they introduce the Julia character, and that's a little bit after they introduce the Ashley character, who, you know, I mean, that's a, the biggest fucking inconsistency with this movie. And I'm just gonna, you know, fuck it, I'm gonna skip into the inconsistencies with this fucking movie, because I don't want to summarize this. I mean, you've seen this. You have seen this movie. If you, like, seriously, if you have seen the stuff with Kimberly in Ishbal and the stuff he does in Briggs, if you have seen the ending of Fullmetal Alchemist, you've already seen this movie. You have already, if you've seen the beginning of Fullmetal Alchemist, you have already seen this movie. Because the plot, it doesn't really change. It's somebody trying to make a Philosopher's Stone, although they don't explicitly refer to it as a Philosopher's Stone in their mythology. Edward refers to it as a stone, because it really is, it's just some other mythology that they go by. But you have seen this movie. It's somebody trying to make a Philosopher's Stone, there's a few twists here and there, but you know, fuck it, let's skip straight into the inconsistencies. This girl, Julia, for some reason, or you know what, fuck it, let's go, let's backtrack. When you apparently, apparently, when you eat a Philosopher's Stone, you lose your soul. It the, the stone eats away at your soul. That's not in the manga. I don't know where the fuck they pulled that shit from because that never happens in the fucking manga. And you know another thing is this is the this is the biggest I mean spoonful of bullshit I've seen. This girl Julia 
she swallows a stone, and then she goes fucking Super Saiyan, where, I mean, seriously, she goes Super Saiyan, her, her hair gets, goes fucking crazy, and the color of her eyes changes, and now she has, like, magic powers and shit, I mean, of course they're not magic powers, it's understandable because she has it, she does have a fucking stone and she can't do alchemy, but it's just fucking crazy because since when did swallowing a stone turn you into a fucking, like, crazy, sexy eyelash having weird beast? Because I'm pretty sure Kimberly would swallow his fucking stone, he, that guy was swallowing his stone for fucking seven years in prison, and... I don't think he ever turned into a woman. I don't think he ever, you know, had a uh, flair to go Super Saiyan. Can you fucking imagine if when Edward is fighting Kimberly or when Scar is fighting Kimberly, his fucking hair would go crazy and he'd get sexy eyelashes and shit? Get the fuck out of here with that. I don't, I don't understand why they did that. I mean, it's a stone. It's a regular Philosopher's Stone. So why on earth did all that shit happen with her and the fucking hair? I don't fucking know. Another thing, and this is, this is fucking ridiculous. They say that you need a fucking stone. I know I'm saying fuck a lot here, but bear with me. This movie pissed me off a lot. They, they say that you need a stone to open the gate of truth. Um, but we know that's bullshit. Edward, Alphonse, Izumi, Hohenheim, Roy, they all access the gate of truth without a stone. I mean... Seriously, did they even watch the fucking anime? Did they even fucking watch, like, the first few episodes where they open the Gate of Truth? It shows them opening the Gate of Truth with no Philosopher's Stone. And, you know, here's another inconsistency. And this one was fucking ridiculous. This girl, Julia, uh, she saves her brother. Apparently, she needs, she needs to open the Gate of Truth to save her brother, even though we see her using medical alchemy before in the movie, and she has a Philosopher's Stone, which you would think would amplify medical abilities, but apparently not. So she has to open the Gate of Truth. She loses her leg, right? And that's fine and dandy. We all know you gotta sacrifice something once you see truth. But, <sighs> she has no leg at the end of the movie. And, at the end of the fucking film, Someone gives her an auto male leg. Now, if you have seen Full Metal Alchemist, you know that Edward was an unusual case, and he was he was able to recover from that fucking surgery and start using his auto male. But it took him a good time, a good amount of time. I think it was maybe a few like I want to say it was a year or two, but I don't quite remember. But it was a substantial amount of time. Someone gives this girl a fucking auto male leg, and she's walking around with it in two fucking seconds. Did she have auto male surgery in one second and then recover in the next? Wh what the fuck sort of sense does that make? The, the main villain of this movie is trying to get a Philosopher's Stone so that he can, you know, I guess rule the world or whatever. But here's the fucking thing. This guy already can transmute without clapping. He doesn't need to clap to transmute. He, all he needs to do is like point his hand. He doesn't need to follow the law of equivalent exchange. And his alchemy, for the most part, is pretty goddamn powerful already. So what the fuck does this guy need a Philosopher's Stone for? Can someone explain this to me? I mean, if I was an alchemist who A, did not need to clap, and B, did not need to follow equivalent exchange, I think I would be the happiest fucking alchemist in the world because I don't need to follow the stupid laws of alchemy anymore. But, you know, apparently in this movie, this guy still needs a stone, even though he clearly does not need a stone because he... He whoops Edward's ass, I remember. In the first, like, the first scene of the movie where you see him, he whoops Edward's ass, I believe. And then Alphonse has to go rescue Edward. He fights these people again. He kills a, he kills a few of them. He kills wolf chimeras and shit with, like, no hesitation, no problem at all with his alchemy. But apparently he still needs a stone. Why? Why would anyone need a stone? So really, the thing about this fucking movie is, the villain is shit. The twist is weird, I mean, it's a strange-ass twist, and then the twist, the twist at the end where they use human transmutation is just fucking stupid too. None of the characters you like show up in this movie. The characters that do show up are there for three fucking seconds. I mean, I, I guess this movie, this movie automatically takes place after Hughes dies. I guess probably after, after Lust dies too, but you can never be sure with this shit. Julia is a fucking Mary Sue. And Ashley is a bitch. Overall, it just has a lot of fucking inconsistencies. Uh, the plot could have been overall better if, the, you know, they weren't recycling shit 
from the original Full Metal Alchemist if they weren't just recycling shit from there. And you know, this is what happens. This is what happens when Bones, when fucking Bones is in charge of a project. When the original author, Hiromu Arakawa, has no influence because I, I seriously doubt she created Julia. I seriously doubt she created anyone for this fucking movie because her name is nowhere on the credits except for original author. And I remember with Dragon Ball Z, they would put, like, character design or something, Akira Toriyama. No, they don't put shit except for original author. So she had nothing to do. But this is what happens when you give Bones fucking Full Metal Alchemist. They fucked it up with the 2003 anime. They fucked it up with Conqueror Shambhala even worse. And now they fucked it up here. How the fuck could you possibly mess this up a third time? I mean, okay, you know, I'm a fan of at least episodes like 27 through 41 of the Full Metal Alchemist anime in 2003. I will admit that those deviations in the fucking plot, they were cool. I liked them. I liked the stuff with Kim Lee. I liked the stuff with Archer. I liked the stuff with, you know, Martell, even though Martell's death is just complete bullshit. But I like that stuff. It's after episode 41, that last 10 episode stretch, that the shit really starts to stink. And then the last episode is just a culmination of all that messed up bullshit. And then Conquer of Shambhala takes it to another level, makes it even worse. We get, like, Nazi Hughes in that fucking movie. Hughes is a Nazi. And that movie, that movie, the ending to that movie is so insulting. It's so fucking insulting to fans of Fullmetal Alchemist. And now... After that, they make Brotherhood, but they... Brotherhood is not good because Bones made it. Brotherhood is good because the manga is good, and now they make this fucking movie. I will say this. Bones created two good characters, two good original characters in the Fullmetal Alchemist universe. They created uh, Isaac McDougal, which is a, a fucking funny name, but, I mean, Isaac was a badass. And they created Frank Archer. Two characters as opposed to, uh, what, like, four or five that they created for the anime? Let, let's go down the list here. Lyra? Uh, Lyra sucked. I'm just gonna say it. Lyra was ass. Uh, Dante? <laughs> Dante. Dante was bullshit. Terrible fucking villain. I mean, the end of the fucking anime where she turns Gluttony into this monster, and then she's trying to escape in an elevator, and she's like, Oh, Gluttony! What are you doing? What are you? And, and Gluttony eats her, I guess. Apparently, she had no way to reverse the effects of what she did to Gluttony. That makes a lot of fucking sense. Uh, they created some other uh, original characters for an episode. Here's the thing about Bones. They'll create original characters for one episode, and that motherfucker will die. Those people will die in the same episodes. They do this in this movie, too. Like, there's this guy named Pedro who shows up, and he has a backstory. Like, he tells Edward, Oh, man, my father and mother were killed in, in this war. And Edward's like, Oh, shit. Well, okay. Uh, I'm gonna back off. And then, like, two seconds later, the guy fucking gets killed by a wolf in there. You know what? I, I, I've gone off on a tangent here. This movie, this fucking movie, it deserves this rating. It, it's not a rest in piss, because I, I can't... Conqueror of Shambhala is a rest in piss. This is far better than Conqueror of Shambhala. So, Full Metal Alchemist, Sacred Star of Milos, gets a BULLSHIT!